Hey everyone, I'm Mao. I'm a designer working on the video game industry and welcome to the Game Design Perspective. Before anything, quick disclaimer, everything I'm going to be talking about in this video is my opinion and my opinion alone. It does not represent any other entity, studio or employer, past, present or future that I work on. With that said, let's begin. So last week, we actually went through a playthrough of Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, which is a game that I absolutely adore and I firmly believe that it is possibly the best stealth mission ever made. Its level design and mission design is just fantastic and what we're gonna be doing today is actually break out a little bit of, of the map and mission design to see possibly how it was conceived. Of course since this is somewhat of a short video we will not be exploring every single aspect of the map or the mission. It is actually a very long process and we could actually end up talking about the mission for an entire day if that was the case. With that said let's begin. All right, so we're here at the map. I've prepared this map for this video because I divided it into what I consider are the different sections of what make Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zero's Camp Omega. I also changed the colors a little bit. Green is actually easy and red is what I consider actually to be the hardest part of the level. So with that said, how about we start diving into this? Section one is where the mission begins, right? This is our tutorial section. You know, this is where we actually take a look with our binoculars and Cass pretty much teaches us the stealth loop, how a stealth loop actually works and pretty much tells us how to play a stealth game. We take a vantage point and from the vantage point, we actually go down. It's actually very interesting how it is made because we started at a very high vantage point and then we go down naturally while Cass is actually telling us how to move and how to avoid lines of sight and then we're guided into a vantage point like this artificial sort of vantage point, point where we climb and we actually take a look at how the mission is laid out again that is our tutorial section now we have two refugee camps which are the uh, number two and number five these refugee camps they they have sort of a classic st stealth approach then we have our hangars or storage sections we have then the prisoner cells of I mean, the prisoners in their cells are here, but I consider all of this section to be pretty much uh, just one of it, right? It has the prisoner cells, but you rescue Chico, you're guided into the next section, right? You, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Then we have our RV, or rendezvous, with the first helicopter we'll actually call to the mission. I consider it to be green because there are no enemies there. And usually when when there are enemies actually following you, when, when the guards have, have spotted you, uh, they won't actually reach there. Or it's very rare that, it, that they actually reach. Then we have number eight, which are the helipads. This part is very hard. There are almost no ways of breaking lines of sight here. And by lines of sight, I mean like there's almost no way of hiding, right? You have these helipads that are very large and there are huge spaces that have no cover. Then this is nine. This is very small. I, I don't think it's a, a, like a very specific zone. That's why I call it the camera hallway. Then we have number 10, which is where pass is located. This is like an, an underground passage. And finally, we have the parking lots, right? So how is the mission laid out? We start our tutorial section, right? We complete the stealth loop, right? And then we have two ways to proceed, right? This is where we uh, deal with the guard and we have two ways of, to proceed. We take the exit over here or we take the exit over here, which leads to a smaller vantage point. This one is a little bit more intended. This one is where you actually unlock the door. I do feel it is a little bit more intended for the playthrough. And right after that, with the vantage point that we found here, we are actually encouraged to move here to zone three all right this is a very easy section there are almost no guards there usually usually the guards can be roaming around here and all of that stuff but they change their patrol routes after you rescue chico and after you rescue pass when you first begin the mission they're most likely not gonna be there when you begin the mission there's probably just gonna be one which is located in a vantage point right there at the, our vantage tower all right so it's very easy to see there are almost no ways of getting spotted unless you actually want to it is a very easy section you're not really encouraged to go here to number four or to number two i mean you can of course if you want to get more info and intel about the mission and all of that stuff but overall 
you're not really encouraged to go there. So you're most likely going to go to number three. There's only one guard there, so the difficulty is fairly easy, all right? This vantage point actually looks in that direction, to number five and six. Number five is our East refugee camp. This is also somewhat of a classic stealth layout, all right? You have all of these tents and the hallways, which actually encourage you to maneuver around the enemies. This section is, is fairly interesting, but it's also fairly easy because you have so many ways of breaking the lines of sight that you're most likely not going to get caught. I mean, there's a vantage tower right here, which alternates its path. The light path is alternating it in this way. All right, so difficulty starts increasing, all right? You're not only having to deal with just a light or a guard as it was there, but you, now you have to deal with, I think it's what, like three guards that you have to deal with. There's one, at least we encountered on our playthrough one here, and two that are patrolling around here and here, all right? There are not too many guards, all right? And the, the place is actually kind of large, so the patrol pads are most likely not gonna overlap with them, all right? So it's fairly easy to avoid them and you need to deal with the light with this vantage point with this light so we're starting to see how the difficulty is increasing you're guided into the tutorial zone and you're guided to follow these watchtowers that's also guiding you into the difficulty curve right here we then de dealt with this patrol we're right at, at the vantage point and we actually marked some enemies there and we moved into area number six now this part is very interesting because as you're being guided all right as you can see see right now our mission is divided in two we have this first section or it could be three all right it could be the editorial section all right i'm just counting it on, on the first part just to not over complicate things but i would consider it to be divided in two you have this section all right this section where the first part of the mission takes place. You're gonna rescue Chico. Cass tells you, hey, take a look at your eye droid. You're gonna see where your objective is marked, all right? So at all times, you know where you have to go and our vantage points and towers are guiding us into zone six, where Chico is. We always know that Chico is right here at all times. We take out our eye droid and we have our, ob our objective marked. We always know we need to go to, part to zone six, all right? So I do consider the mission to be guided into sections that's the first one and the second one is right here and you'll see why in a second all right but you are funneled into this section all right as the mission guides you the only two ways to accessing section number six is here and here there is a wall here that actually does not allow you to go into section six. So there, there's only two ways of getting there. Now, as the mission is guiding you, they funnel you into going this way. We're starting to see that the experience is okay. All right, we're gonna control the experience a little bit more because we're about to hit a story bit. We're about to reach our objective. We're about to reach Chico. This is possibly being done because of two reasons. Yes, we're reaching a, a story bit. We're reaching Chico and they want to control the experience a little bit more so that it becomes a little bit more cinematic. But also this decreases the difficulty a little bit because you do not have to worry about the guards on section five or four or any of that. You do not have to worry about that as you're being funneled. Now you're focusing on the next section. And that is true for every other section as well. While you're in five, you're most likely not going to be worrying about the guards on section four, three or two or whatever. Right? It also decreases difficulty as we go by. All right. So yes, I think it, that those are the two reasons why this may be, be done. Of course, if you guys find any other reasons, please let, let me know. But yeah. Now, there are two ways of getting into Chico. There's there's a locked door somewhere around here. And there's a watchtower right here. We noted on our playthrough that there are some uh, natural vantage points throughout the level. And one of them is here because the terrain is actually go lowering. It's actually going down. So we have this natural vantage point and they provide us cover to actually study and assess and find Chico possibly. And we're guided into this spot. Why? Because we see a locked door here. We see a guard here. And this part, all of this has more light than this part. We also see vantage, a vantage tower that has no light. So we are guided into going this way. We take that point, we like cast talk to us about Amanda and all that stuff. We reach this vantage tower. We can actually find Chico here, which Chico is located right there. All right, and we can actually jump. 
from there. Once we jump into this part, the experience is almost totally controlled, all right? The only way for us to get out, or as far as I know, is to actually deal with the locked door. So once we rescue Chico, we need to deal with that. And also, if you sleep the guards or knock them out, after the cutscene, they're most likely going to wake up. If you kill them, that's a different story. I don't tell to kill them, and especially for the video, because I actually wanted to see how the guards react how the guards change patrols. That's a very interesting study and it could actually deserve its own video to be honest because this mission is so large. Again, we're only talking about the general stuff and how it could have possibly been laid out at first. The experience is totally controlled when we are in the prison cells and we need the Chico deal with this locked door and Cass tells us, hey, call the RV. And once you actually take the helicopter, the game automatically, automatically leads you to press the A button right here. Here. This is our RV. This is where we need to take Chico. Something very interesting is that this locked door is looking this way. So the level itself is guiding us into the RV. And it is guiding us into taking the lower zone to avoid these two guards that always talk and ride around there and are always patrolling there and actually make it a little bit harder for us to to take Chico to the RV. A lot of times I've seen a lot of players that they don't actually realize that there are two ways of getting there, which also work as two exits, which are this one and this one, all right? Because the level itself is just guiding you that well at this point, that experience is so controlled that when you leave Chico here, you wait for the RV, this is completely safe, all right? You wait for the RV and once you go back, you are funneled back again into the mission here everything is guiding you there you're funneled back in all right so this section section six is somewhat of its own beast completely alone right from the entirety of the level every single time you're gonna get there you're funneled so you get out here there are two guards over there you deal with them while you're also listening to the tape if you pay close attention to the tape and you hear what Cass is telling you well Cass tells you i hear a flag the helicopter and all of that stuff they give you a little bit of time to get the context out of the tape while you get out of this. Now, if you hurry, you can actually synchronize the tape to what you're seeing on screen, but most likely you're not gonna synchronize it on your first playthrough. This is very interesting because as you are funneled back into the mission, because you are guided into this way, this is the only time in the level that I feel that they are guiding you in a hard way. They're not soft guiding you. I do feel they are hard guiding you back into the mission so that you synchronize the tape. You're being guided by the tape and the level back into the mission and you know where you need to go. All right. So you hear the tape and this is where you see a truck and you see a flag. Literally, Cass, Cass tells you about both of them at the same time. You see both of them. All right. So once you see that and if you're paying a cl close attention to the tape, well, you see the truck literally leaving through here. You know where you need to go. If you do not get on top of the truck, well, you can't take that route. Why? Because there are no ways of breaking lines of sight. You're not guided into taking that route, into literally following the truck, because there are no ways of breaking lines of sight. It is way harder and you do not feel safe. It is very well lit usually, and there's, there's no just no cover, all right? So you're most likely going to take this, this route, all right? You are rewarded even with a cutscene if you take the take the boss, but you're mo most likely not gonna do it on your first try. So you go to section eight, and this, I do not consider it to be red at this point. I do consider it to be somewhat of a orangey in terms of difficulty. I chose to place it as red because after we rescue pass, the mission becomes way harder. Like this part is super, super hard to deal with, all right? So yeah, we deal, we deal with this part. Usually you won't take these helipads because there's almost no cover here. What we did on our playthrough was pretty much go through here. We, okay, we grabbed some ammo here and got into section nine. We got into section nine. Section nine is fairly easy, right? The, like the difficulty curve is a little lowering a little bit, which is fine. Difficulty curves don't tend to be straight, but that's a topic for another day. This is fairly easy. There's just one guard here and a camera right here. Or yeah, now more like here, all right? There's just one guard and one camera. 
the layout for that part is actually fairly classic stealth game. It's, it's a fairly classic design. You can actually see it back in Metal Gear Solid 1 and even in Metal Gear 1 and 2. Like those layouts are fairly, fairly easy to understand and they're fairly classic. The only twist that Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zero adds is that there is a stair right here, which you can take and it is almost completely safe and you can actually have some vantage point there. So we're starting to see that, yes, the Ubisoft watchtowers are back here. Yes somewhat different but watchtowers are at, from Ubisoft are actually here to help stealth all right because they decrease the difficulty a lot and we're gonna see later how the difficulty was largely increased without them we dealt with the camera we went down here with uh we, we dealt with the guard the camera we went down there we found some guards and rescue pass somewhere around here this part of the map is a little bit hard to grasp here because it's underground and we just have a map from the outside all right we rescued pass and then we followed this way now here is where the level after you rescue pass is where the level stops guiding you that much the mission pretty much tells you you already know your layout you already know how to play get pass out however you want take whichever path you like we could backtrack we could rescue pass somewhere around here on these helipads we could rescue pass here or here it pretty much guides you into difficulty if you take a look at your iDroid and it tells you that this first part that this this RV is actually the easiest one by this RV being the easiest one well they're pretty much telling you go there this one's difficulty is moderate and these ones are high so if I wanted to save pass here I would need to deal with every single guard here at least that's if other guards don't see the chopper coming like guards from here 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 right you would need to deal with a lot of guards so what do you do well you can take pass out through nine or through 11. There's always player's choice here, all right? You can take nine or you can take 11. We took 11 because we need, we wanted to see how the map was laid out. We wanted to see the mission and the level and all of that. So we took 11, right? And you'll see that when we took 11, if you take a look at the playthrough, it's actually somewhat hard to get out of there. There are only two sort of vantage points that don't really help us into dealing with all of this, all right? The first one is here where there's a staircase, which doesn't really allow us to see all of this. And there's another one here, which leads to a watchtower that, that and has a guard looking this way, all right? This one does not help us either because we have this building as you see there, all right? So our, like, our vantage points are pretty much useless at that point, don't help us that much. And we have to deal with the stealth in a very classic Metal Gear. We need to take the corners and look and study in the corners while pretty much not being safe at all. This part is actually kind of hard because it also has two cameras. It has one here looking this way and one somewhere around here looking this way. I mean, this is an approximation, right? Got, the cameras are also hard to deal with, right? This section is not easy. If you are here, well, now you, you see this door, it's always open. This time the door is not closed, but you're not encouraged to take it. You could, but you're not encouraged. Why? Because all of these patrols, like they have accumulated. I think there are even two, there's a watchtower around here and there are two patrols there. And there's also a tank. There's also a tank looking this way and it has the lights up. That increases difficulty a lot because you cannot hide in the dark. And well, you, there's a tank there. They can almost one shot you or pass. So you're not encouraged to go there. All right. The mission right here is guiding you to go this way. All right. Yes. I know that we said when we rescued Paz that we can take actually nine and you can. All right. Just when you reach this point, when you reach eight, you're going to find the difficulty to curve to spike. All right, so you have two choices. You can either go back and you're, or you can deal with it. Dealing with it is gonna be hard, but you can do it. I do believe that at this point, when you reach, when you see this part, when you see how eight is being guarded, you are guided into this way. So that is where now our hard guiding comes a little bit back, all right? And since the heliport has a light looking at you and has a lot of guards, well, you sort of go around it like this. You avoid the, heli the heliport and you start hiding and hiding and hiding. And this is actually fairly easy to do. It's the easiest route I think you can actually take, all right? And then you can reach 
the RB pretty much safe. You already know this layout, all right? You know this, you know this. This one, you don't actually need to know it. And I think that actually the map is like this, all right? That was my bad. Yeah, you can just go around it and that's pretty much it. You can go through here and yeah, it all becomes extremely easy, all right? So yes, the level is somewhat guiding you if you pay attention. And if you don't, well, that doesn't mean the fun is over. This is a sandbox. There are a million ways to complete this level. Real quick, before we end the mission study, real quick, see how uh, the intention behind every zone is. So this one is a tutorial zone, all right? You're pretty much safe. The intention is that you get a grasp of the stealth loop. Now, both of the, refu of the refugee camps, two and five, are meant for stealth, all right? You, you get low, there are almost no lines of sight. It's fairly easy to do so. So it, these ones are properly stealth. Three is pretty much the intention is being a watchtower, all right, so that you can assess the mission. Four, well, four is pretty much our way out, right? You have, I think, like two hangars around here, and this layout is fairly simple. There's just one guard usually. That one's just our, our figure eight, which helps us in stealth. I don't think the stealth is as marked as in this one. In here, this is Rescue Chico. We do not have any classic stealth. We have any safe spot, teleport. Almost no lines of sight. The intention is being hard. You're infiltrating into the hardest spot in the mission. Nine, classic stealth. 10, classic, classic stealth. 11, classic stealth with different themes. All right. So that is how our mission is pretty much laid out. Every zone has its section. And the beauty behind Ground Zeroes is that the roads divided so beautifully. All right. We have our sandbox that is divided so beautifully. Every sandbox game usually is divided by zones. Even if you, even if you take a look at Mario Odyssey, for example, which is a completely different genre, it has its zones where it is thematically different. The challenge is thematically different. It can be platforming. I don't know. It can like there it can be a transformation. For example, Tostarena, the desert level, you have like this rock heads that you can capture and every single level, every single part has a different theme and it's no different right here. All right. And we can start seeing how the mission is structured. All right. By difficulty, by themes and all of that. So yeah, I do believe that is our uh, map study. I hope you liked the mission study. This is very general. This is a br very brief overview of what it is. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any comments or something that I just didn't see, please let me know. I would love to know everything about this mission because this is a masterclass, not only in level design, but also in mission design. And not only for stealth games, but also for any other genres that use sandbox sort of level design approach. All right. Mario Odyssey, Mario 64, all right. All of those plat platformers actually have that deal with sandbox well this is also a master class of how it is laid out of course some things are exclusive to stealth right like the guards patrolling and all of that but this is a master class and i would love to know everything about it so if you have any questions anything to comment anything that i missed please let me know i hope you like it please like comment and subscribe thank you so much for watching guys i love you and we'll see you in the next one bye guys